Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new Pokemon TC Live Temporal Forces deck video, and today we're going to look at a Roaring Moon deck that actually won an online tournament, playing both the Roaring Moon EX and the single prize Roaring Moon. Now, I want to give a big shout out to Freeware for actually winning an online tournament with this Roaring Moon deck exactly. It's a really cool list. They ended up winning the whole thing, and they have some pretty interesting innovations within the deck. So it is a Roaring Moon split deck. We got the Roaring Moon EX in the deck. We all know Roaring Moon EX was a very strong card before rotation. But when rotation happened, the card got a little bit weaker, obviously losing Galarian Moltres V, losing Battle VIP Pass did slow the deck down a little bit. But we do gain the addition to now combine it with the one prize Roaring Moon with the Vengeful Fletching Attack that does 70 damage plus 10 more damage for each Ancient card in your discard pile. Now, the main way to play this is to play it with a bunch of Ancient cards like Coridon for another attacker. And then, of course, you have other Ancient cards like Explorer's Guidance and Professor Sada's Vitality. Cards like Ancient Booster Capsule are really good. Earth and Vessel. There's a ton of Ancient cards you can combine with this deck. Now, the main way to play it is obviously with Coridon, but the idea to play with Roaring Moony X isn't bad either. Having two good attackers, having a nice one prize beat stick, and to have that big attacker in the Roaring Moony X, which can be very good at knocking out whatever is in the active spot with Frenzy Gouging, and even just having Calamity Storm to KO other basic EX Pokemon is really, really good. And you can still build this thing up with Sada and Dark Patch like you can with the One Prize Roaring Moon. Now, if y'all are going to go on to enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like on the video. Y'all have been killing it with the support and all the content so far. So today's like goal is 400 likes on today's video. If y'all have been enjoying the content, make sure to slap that like button and all that good stuff. I've been just loving grinding the new format, playing all the new decks. And one deck I really wanted to try out was something to do with the One Prize Roaring Moon. I've played the Ancient Box deck with the Coridon, and I do like it. My one main issue with the deck is how bricky it is. I mean, the Ancient Box deck is fun, but it's very bricky. Ricky, it relies very heavily on Greninja being in play in order to function. You just don't have a draw engine in the deck, and it's, it can be prone to Ionos. One cool innovation in this deck, however, was the addition of the da Dunsparce. Now, this card is actually really, really cool. It's got that ability, run away, draw. Once during your turn, you can draw three cards, and if you draw cards in this way, shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached to it back into your deck. So, you play the da Dunsparce, you draw three cards, and you put it back in your deck. Now, it is a stage one. It does evolve from Dunsparce, but Dunsparce is fine. I mean, it's got 6 HP. One good thing about it, it's got a free retreat cost, making it a very good pivot within this deck, especially when you're using Dark Patches. And even the Dunsparce can be a pivot too, because you can use its ability even when it's in the active spot. So as long as you have the Dunsparces in play, if you get Iono constantly, you're still able to draw three cards and keep chaining Dunsparce, especially when you combine it with Artisans. If it stays in play, you can keep Artisaning out your Dunsparces and keeping things in play and making sure that you don't get Ionoed as easily into a bad hand when you have the Dunsparce open, which is what I like about this build over the Coridon build, because you can't play Dunsparce in Coridon because you need to put Ancient Pokemon in play for Coridon's main attack. Now, before we get the video, shout out to the sponsor card, Kevin TCG. Of course, if you're going to get any Pokemon TCG live pack outs, get them over at Card Cavern. Of course, if you're looking to pick up any Temporal Forces set code still, or you want to get some IRL singles and product cards. Card Cavern sells all that over there too. Again, they have Card Cavern at the checkout. Use my discount code, code LDF for a 5% discount on your order. Help the channel, help yourself out, and help our Card Cavern. So big shout out to Card Cavern. Check them out. Use code LDF, link down below. Check out the Shuffle Squad and my second channel down below too. My second channel's recent video, I looked at a brand new Milotic card, which could be pretty good and also pretty bad for Snorlax decks. So here is the full Decklist view here for the deck. As you can see, we do have a pretty simple Pokemon count. We got the four Roaring Moon, the three Moony X, the one Greninja, and the three three Dunsparce. Again, no Coridon, no Flutter Mane, and nothing like that. We're just going all in on the Moon. But the Moons are really good. I mean, you either have a Moon that KOs whatever's in the active spot, or you have the one prize Moon, which can be a good one prize beat stick. The Ancient Booster Capsule is really good in the deck too, because you can use it on your moons to give them more HP, especially the Moon EX. After you frenzy gouging, if you have the Ancient Booster Capsule on, you still have a lot of HP left, which is nice. And then, of course, we do have the Penny in the deck. Now, one thing I like about this deck, it probably is really good against Control. You don't really care if Dunsparce gets trapped in the active by Snorlax, because you can use Runaway Draw. And if your Greninja gets trapped, I mean, you can hopefully discard it early on with an Ultra Ball or Vessel or something. But if, say, it does get stuck or you start with it, you do play that one of Penny. You can Penny the Greninja in your hand, discard it, and Moon is really good against Snorlax. Either this Roaring Moon one prizer is going to do a ton of damage, or the Roaring Moon EX can insta knock out the Rodoms, can knock out the Snorlax. And this is one thing I like about the deck. It has a good control matchup. I think maybe one matchup that could be tough is maybe Charizard, but even then, you have Frenzy Gouging with Ancient Booster Capsule, so that if they Charmander you, I mean, you got the Ancient Booster Capsule on, you're forcing them to find the Lost Vacuum, take out your Moon. Prime Catcher is really good in the deck, too. Like, the Insta Gust is really nice. The deck also plays a Counter Catcher on the off chance you're playing a bit slower. And then there is, of course, 
the one boss in the deck. A really interesting 60, and I really like the idea of the Dadan Sparse in the deck. Let me know what you think of this moon deck down below. Once again, shout out to Freeware for the list and for winning the online tourney. Congrats again, and let's go show off the deck on live. We're up against Shen Pao here. The starting hand's actually pretty solid, so that's nice. Um, pretty good hand. Let's check our prizes here. Dunsparce, the Roaring Moons are in there. All right, most of the stuff is in there. That's good to know. Okay, I think I want to just grab my basics first. I'm going to get a Dunsparce. I'm going to Artisan. I might save that other Nest Ball, to be honest, just for Roaring Moony X. I don't want to put the Roaring Moony X in play right away because they can, like, Prime Catcher me. Knock it out early on, which I don't want to have happen. Another Ryan Moon. We'll bench that. Trekking Shoes. I kind of need that. But I need to dig for a supporter, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Ancient Booster Capsule. Pass, I guess? No supporter for next turn kind of sucks. I want to be able to attack next turn and take a knockout. Um... With something. I'm going to save the energy attachment in case I get Dark Patch or Sada. Because I might be able to go for an early Roaring Moony X knockout here. Which would be pretty important. So we'll see. They might not get a great setup. I didn't want to give them a free Artisan, obviously. But I kind of had to. So I want to save the Nest Ball for Roaring Moony X. Need like an Unsparse or something next turn. We're just kind of in need of something like a top deck here. That can give us some more playable cards. Alright, they got Roxanne. That's an interesting card to see in Shen Pao. Okay. Trekking Shoes, too. That's a very interesting Shen Pao list. What the heck? Earthen Vessel. Now, are they playing Iron Hands is going to be the question. Because if I whiff this knockout, Greninja might be staying in the active spot. So I only want to use Prime Catcher if I'm taking a knockout on something. Morty's Conviction? Alright, no Irida. I mean, hey, if you're only putting one Phrygia in play, I'm going to happily knock it out with Vengeful Feathers if I can actually draw into a Sada or something. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here, bro. What's my opponent playing? What's her angle? No, they do have Iron Hands. They're actually going to retreat into it. Oh, wow. If they only have the one Phrygia here... Oh, and they only got one Phrygia. So if I can find a way to build up my Roaring Moon on the bench, I can take a knockout. This hand doesn't allow me to do that currently, though, so it's a little sus. We can get, like, a Dunsparce here. Anything can change. I think I got a Thin with this Nest Ball. I gotta get my stuff. All right, here we go, Greninja. We need something. Give me a Sada. No. Okay, we got Dark Energy's good. Trekking Shoes, Boss... I got to get rid of that. I need to dig. No, we got an Explorer's Guidance. All right, we can play that here. We got Dark Patch. We got Sada. We will take those two cards. All right, all right. And then we can attach Dark Patch to the Roy Moon. I think I might want to save the Ancient Booster Capsule in the hand. We'll just bring in the uh, Phrygia here. Knock it out with Vengeful Feathers. Unfortunately, I did not get a Denunspar set up, but that's fine. We'll take our prize, see what we got here. Super Rod, not too shabby. All right, not bad. I did have to give up two Gusts to pull that playoff, which kind of sucks, but as long as I can, like, tempo against my opponent, this might not be a big deal. Iron Hands isn't that scary at the moment because it's not knocking out my active. They can't even build it up, so I don't know. It sucks I had to lose that boss, but I needed to get rid of the boss for the greater good so I can get the Explorer's Guidance to get the turn one knockout. It is what it is. They are playing a bit of a weird list, though. Like I said, they do have, like, weird supporters like Roxanne and Morty and Trekking Shoes. Not something you usually see in Gem Pals. I have no idea what to expect here. They're playing Arctabax, too. Sure. Another Phrygy. That's fine. I'm not knocking that out anytime soon, so that's fine. There's Pokestop. They finally found that. All right. Are they going to spin it? Hopefully they get rid of good cards, a.k.a. Baxcalibers and Iridas. I mean, this isn't bad. We can just attack the Iron Hands here with this. We're two-shotting them now, I'm pretty sure. I know they already had Irida in hand. Look at that. How much are we doing right now? One, two, three. I guess I can read how much I did to the Frigibax. I'm trolling. How much did I do to Frigibax? Where is it at? 110 damage. Yeah, so... I can play Sada. Okay, yeah, this is fine. We can play the Sada here and get even closer to... Uh, we need to do. Maybe I shouldn't have benched too many Dunsparces because now they can Greninja me. So maybe that was a misplay. Now I need to find the Dunsparces actually. I just realized. That actually might be pretty bad. I need to evolve 
Okay, there we go. I was like, yeah, I need to get the Dunsparce to set up. Because now, like, I didn't realize my opponent can actually just Greninja the two of them. Yeah, let's do this. Now we're doing 120, which is a two-shot. Didn't get another Dunsparce. Oof. Yeah, I maybe shouldn't have put so many of these guys in play. That's fine. We can do this to try to draw into another dead Dunsparce. Nice. There we go. We can... Get rid of the penny. It's fine. Grab the Dunsparce back. As long as I have these things in play and they can't get KO'd by Greninja, it's fine. I don't want my opponent to be able to take two prices against me. Um, they are playing weird cards like Roxanne, so I'm like kind of skeptical as to whether or not I want to play this because I also can get Roaring Moon going, so I might just save that. I guess I'm not really doing Roaring Moon next turn, though. I don't know. We'll just Vengeful Fletching them. It's fine. We'll just poke the Iron Hands for 130. We can set up a two-shot on it. That's fine. Yeah, we'll just set up the 2 a KO here on the Iron Hands. My opponent does have the ability to get back Excalibur out here. But, like I said, Ampy very much does not kill my active. They have to go for a Prime Catcher or a Counter Catcher. We'll see if they're able to pull all that off. Problem is, though, even if they go for, like, a Prime Catcher here... Um, with Iron Hands, I just, like, I KO them. I go down to three prizes. Or, yeah, three prizes remaining. And they stay at four. So, like, we're still in the lead if they do an Amp KO this turn. But yeah, I need to not put so many Dunsparces in play. I completely forgot about the Greninja being a problem for us. I forgot Greninja can just kind of take out my, my bench like that. But that's fine. All right, we have a six-card hand here. And they also have six cards. So we'll see if they go for a hand disruptor in a couple turns. Like, I don't know what the heck they're playing, bro. They have Roxanne in the deck. Like, I don't, you don't, you, like they're playing weird supporters. But, like, the thing with Shen Pao is usually it can't fit that many supporters because it has to play so many items. So I'm hoping they're only playing, like, the one Roxanne and no Ionos. Okay, their Pokey Stop does give them an Ultra Ball. Get another Bibberol. It's fine. They can't even KO this thing with Iron Hands this turn. There's actually no way they can knock my active out. They have to go around the uh, the Roaring Moon this turn. That's actually pretty good. The Roaring Moon cannot get KO'd this turn by anything on their board. They can go Greninja, knock out Dunsparce. Then I knock out their Greninja. And they put this. They put 90 here. I can just Dunsparce this. No, they're not going to put 90 on this, but we'll see. Their best play, honestly, might be to go Greninja. They won't, don't want to leave this in the active. They'll just knock it out. Even if they had a lost vacuum here or something, this thing still doesn't die to Ampy very much. Yeah, they have to have a gust. Now, I don't know if they have a gust. My opponent hasn't revealed it. They didn't Poke stop for a gust or anything. I guess we're going to find out. But even if they do amp this turn, it's not a big deal. Because I'm still going to knock out the Iron Hands and still be ahead in the prize trade. So it won't even matter. They need to get a Prime Catcher or a Counter Catcher this turn. They've already done everything other than one Bibberol for one card. And will that one card actually give them a gust? Dude, ain't no way. Did they... Wait, did they Bibberol into that? Okay, whatever. Like I said, this isn't a big deal because I'm still going to kill the Iron Hands with the Roaring Moon and still be ahead in the prize trade. But that's pretty annoying. I'm pretty sure they hit that off of the Bibberol. Otherwise, they would have played it before the Bibberol to draw more cards. We're still in the lead. It's fine. Nice. Oh. Um, kind of want to save the Sada here. Yeah, I think we're just going to knock the active out. I'm not even going to do anything. I'm going to save the hand so I can go Roaring Moon EX. So we have the we have the immediate Roaring Moon response here. If my opponent goes for it. All right, what's our two prizes? Nice. I am worried about a Roxanne, though. I don't know. The the list is very strange. So I don't know. Was playing passive correct? Well, either even if they do go for Roxanne, we do have this thing in place. So it's like, all right. We have some mild Roxanne protection. Honestly, maybe I should have went Sada there because I would have probably liked to have gotten another Dead Unsparse in play just in case. Yeah, they can't stall this thing or anything. It's got a three retreat, but its ability is useful any at any stage when it's in the active or on the bench. Dude, I don't know. I'm kind of scared. But like most Shen Pao lists play Cypher Maniacs Code Breakings. I bro. I don't know. I really hope I don't get like randomly cheesed by a Roxanne. Because I could lose. This is not we're not guaranteed to win, but it's looking pretty good. This is looking pretty good right now. Now, maybe I should have played it a little safe and just used Sada to build up my other Roid Moon. I don't know. Maybe we still Pokey Stop if we need to dig for Vessel or something. Or I don't know. Whatever. I, I just don't know what they're playing, bro. I don't know what kind of Shen Pao list this is. They're playing some weird cards like Trekking Shoes, Morty, and Roxanne. 
I don't know. Again, we kind of had, we have mild Roxanne proof here, thanks to the Dun Dun Spars. It's not guaranteed, but we can get our hand back up to six if they Roxanne me. If they play two Roxanne, can they even find their second Roxanne? Nope. That means we keep the hand. Let's go. All right, keeping the hand here is pretty good. They do get a Super Rod. That's fine. They can't win with Iron Hands next turn. If they were at three prizes here and they went down to two, I'd probably lose to Iron Hands because they still have Prime Catcher. But I think we're fine. We do have the Knockout with Roy Mooney X here. We just have to figure out how to take our last prize. We don't have Prime Catcher anymore. We'll see. They have to Shen Pao my Roy Mooney X. All right. We're chilling. They did not get a Hand Shopter. Well, honestly, bro, I can just build up two. We can just build up two Roy Moons here. This is probably just GG's, right? Just put two Roy Moons. And then we're probably winning this. That's the plan. So it's basically checkmate. So what we do is we Nest Ball for the first Roy Moon. And then we Nest Ball for a second Roy Moon here. We got two Roy Moons. And then we sod out of the both of them. One, two. See, we got nice another da Dun Sparse. Uh, attach. Dark Patch. We might as well just do this. Just We're going for the thin route. We're thinning. And then we'll play this runaway draw to Dunsparce. Nice. I was hoping for like a Dark Patch or something just to get that on the Ruined Moon. Now let's do this. Go into this guy. Evolve. I don't really need to do much else. Like... It was not, I think we just knocked the active out here, and that's it. I'm not going to play the Dun Sparse. I'm, I'm just scared of a random Iono or a random Roxanne, because my opponent's playing, like, they're just playing weird supporters. I'm just going to play it cautious, just leave the Dun Sparse and play. I'm not going to use it. We have, like, a pretty, like, most of the cards we can draw into, apart from the Super Rod and the Roaring Moon are playable, we have a plus three. So if they go Roxanne, I draw a card for turn, plus the Dun Sparse puts me to six cards. One of those six cards needs to just be an energy card, and I win. So, it's fine. And I'm obviously not going to leave a Dunsparce in play for the Greninja to knock me out. Uh, we just have no way to gust for game, so it's like... But anything they leave in the active dies. That's why it was good to take that early knockout on that Fridgey, because anything they leave in the active is immediately just gets KO'd. Because they could have won this game still, potentially, by not putting a two-prizer down. So, getting that early one-prize KO was huge for us, because they could have won the game... If I had two prizes left, I think I would have lost because I have no way to bring in that Chem Pow. So I have no way to win this turn if my opponent, if I didn't have two prizes or if I had two prizes. But having one prize left, it means I just win the game this way. So it's like essentially the same thing. My opponent's best bet here, they have to hand a shot me. It has to be like a Roxanne or something. And they can't go around the moon. They have to take out the moon. The moon, they have to kill the moon. They don't kill the moon, they lose. They can't go to sudden death against me, which is good. Yeah, there's nothing they could do. If I had a if I had a Dunsparce in play, they could have went to sudden death because they could have went ninety knockout Dunsparce ninety on Moon. But I have another Moon in play. They do play a Pelpat. See what what did I tell you, bro? This this Shem Palace dude, they have the, the most random stuff in it. I don't know what the heck's going on, bro. See now I'm glad I left this Dunsparce in play because they're playing a Pelpat Roxane in their deck. I don't know what to tell you. All right, we should be okay here. We do have the we do have the Dunsparce. They can't knock it out. We have. I mean, looking at my hand, I have. They might even knock my active out here. All right. They might even draw the Roxane off this Bibberol. It could be in their bottom five cards. And even if they do, like I said, I think we should be okay to get out of this. We'll see. We'll see. I guess I could, like, Roxane trap my other moon on the bench. That could be a problem, I guess. But if I can find Sada, it's fine. They Again, they could whiff the Roxane here. They're not guaranteed to find her. Assuming they're playing one Roxane, which it looks like they are, they're not even guaranteed to draw the Roxane to win the game. So we will see. Oh, they got Roxanne, of course. Okay, well, we're still, like, not out of it. Pretty good. We got Sada. That's a dub. They have to... I mean, it had to be the Roxanne, right? Yeah, now I'm glad I kind of played it passive this turn, or this, this game, or kind of conservative, because, like, dude, Roxanne in, in Shempo, bro? With a pal pad? All right, it should be GG's. They have to... Their only play is to... I think they're honest. The best play was probably to stall this guy, right? Countercatcher this, Roxanne to two. And then put 90 on moon, 90 on moon or something. That's fine. We got we got the dub. My opponent did not get 
um, any other plays, and we can just knock him out with the Roaring Moon EX because we drew Sada. I mean, it was looking pretty good. There's a lot, a lot of cards in our deck here that would have drawn us into a game. Even if we got Explorer's Guidance, we probably still would have won the game anyways, right? So, yeah, there's an energy. And that's game. Frenzy Gouge, Knockout. This is why you want to play the dual Roaring Moon. Is Roaring Moon EX better than just Karinon? I don't know. This felt kind of clean. All right. There you go. That's the dub. Roy Mooney X, the MVP of the deck by far. Best card in here. Yeah. Good stuff. We're up against Future Box here. Uh, We'll see if we can beat it. Our start's not great, though. We have no playable cards. We're going second here with nothing really to do with our current hand. I mean, I can get a couple basics down, but that's about it. It's not great. Um, Yeah, no energy, no vessels, no trekking shoes, no explorer's guidance. Where's my stuff at, bro? What do you mean? I don't even know if this matchup's favored for us. I mean, I guess we want to chase the Iron Crowns. That's probably the way to win. Because otherwise, we're kind of not able to kill the moons as easily. So I don't know. I mean, hopefully we can top deck something here. We can't even, like, do concealed cards or anything. I got no energy in my hand. I got nothing. There is no good stuff going on in my hand right now. We are going second, so at least I can't turn one peak accelerate me for a knockout. But not liking this. Not liking this. Do they have a switch out? No, a pass. I definitely have one in their hand, though. They went and got rid of that town store. Okay, we drew a dark energy. That's good. So you can grab Greninja. You can play Artisan here to thin. We'll grab ourselves another Dunsparce. We'll conceal and hope for something like a Sada or a Explorer's Guidance. Nope. Got some Trekking Shoes, though. We can do... Okay, Trekking Shoes for Shoes. The Classic. Come on. Okay. We got the turn one attack. Look at that. I can't take a KO, right? Can I knock out the Iron Crown this turn? I don't think so. Hold on. How much am I doing? Nope. 160. Um, Maybe I can do it next turn for Lucky. We'll just poke the Iron Hands. I actually kind of like this. I don't think the Moon is getting KO'd by Maraida on this turn. So unless they're going for like a, a knockout on the bench with a Prime Catcher, I'm down to just poke this for 80. Because then I can knock it out later on. Now I can Calamity Storm this Iron Hands without having to do Frenzy Gouging. So I'm actually, I'm down for this. Plus, like I said, my game plan might have to just be go around the Iron Hands. Um, just because 230 HP is really awkward for us for the uh, Roaring Moony X. Because we'd have to Frenzy Gouge them. But I don't want to Frenzy Gouging against Iron Hands. So if they Iron Hands me again the following turn... They take three prizes, which is not good. Though, to be fair, if I frenzy gouging, I think I bypass the heavy baton. I don't know. We'll see. Ooh, switch cart. That's fine. Doesn't really, as long as this thing has like 10 damage on it, it doesn't really matter if they heal it or not. I guess it might make it harder to two shot with a one prize rain moon, but whatever. Do they have anything else? No. Hmm. See, Artisan going to stick around. It's like another moon. Let's see. All right, just a peak acceleration. I don't think we're going to be able to knock out the Iron Crown this turn, unfortunately. It's the only issue. They're spreading the energy out. Interesting. As far as they're building up another Maridon. Okay, what do we draw? Nice. It's a big top deck. Um, I think I'm going to Dunsparce first, though. Yeah, I don't want to play the Earthen Vessel. There's nothing to get rid of in this hand. Obviously, I need these gusting cards. So let's just do the Runaway Draw. Okay. Not bad. We got Penny, which I don't think is going to be relevant. Well, I could double Concealed Cards. I'm not sure we're going to need to do that, though. Let me just do the first Concealed Cards here and see what we got. Pretty good. How much am I... Can I knock out 90? Oh, no. I'm close. If I had a... Um... Well, no. I can Vessel away Roaring Moon, and then I can Boss Kill the Iron Crown this turn. But... Do I... Would I rather just power up Roy Moon this turn instead and just call it a day? Because I can go Vessel away the Roy Moon EX. Then I can do 110 damage, right? So then I can knock out the Iron Crown with Boss here. I mean, I guess that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of want to build the Roy Moon though, but they also didn't put three energy on the Iron Hand. So like this thing might not even be able to amp me next turn without a generator. So I'm actually kind of down to just chase their Iron Crown. Take the first two prize KO of the game. Yeah, I kind of like it. We do have the uh, we do have the counter catcher, which we can't use at the moment, but we can definitely use it. And that that actually validated that play because we just got two more moons off the prizes. All right, cool. 
Yeah, I think that was a, I think that was a correct play. Just take out their Iron Crown. Try to just win the prize trade by tempoing 2-2-2 the entire game. I am totally fine with that. They do play a Town Store, which I can play to get my capsule, too. All right, they have a one card. No, it's an Iono. That's what I was worried about. They were going to have an Iono here. They could ant me this turn, which would be pretty bad if I don't get Roy Mooney X, which it's possible. Though I will now need potentially a Sada or a Dun 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 Sparse. Da -da 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 -dun -sparse. Let's see if they do. Another Iron Hands. Iron Crown. Oh, they're actually not going to kill my bench. All right, cool. Or they're not going to ant me, so they don't have the amp. They could have amped me this turn had they just played a little bit different there. There's no Heavy Baton on this guy either, so if I Calamity Storm it, that's good. Okay, this isn't bad, actually. All right, we're cooking. We can Town Store here real quick to grab a, uh, what do you call a uh, call it? Ancient Booster Capsule's pretty good. Can Nest Ball for a Roaring Mooney X. Do I have Prime Catcher in here? If I can, okay. If I get the Prime Catcher, we might be able to take another two-prize KO. That'd be ideal. It's possible. Got, what, four energy in the discard? I mean, I might need eh, I might need that for the Dunsparce. Eh, maybe should have kept the Ultra Ball, actually, but I want to keep the Capsule and stuff. And I want to do Concealed Cards, because we kind of have to. Damn it. Hmm. Fortunately, I did not get what I was looking for, but... Can just do this. We just swing with the one prize Roaring Moon. We can. Should I put the Ancient Booster Capsule on so they can't amp me? If I go one prize Roaring Moon, knock it. Because I don't want to use my EX, obviously. But also, the EX can't get one shot by Iron Hands with the Ancient Booster Capsule on. They already. Uh, they could vacuum the caps off, arm press it. I think we want to save the Roaring Moon. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go into the one prize guy. Um, trying to think. Do I want to put the caps on? Because they can't one-shot me when they hit me very much. They might just have to go right on. They got to do 200 damage. 140, 160, 180. No, they can one-shot me. I think we just put the capsule here. They actually can one-shot my uh, Roaring Moon, even with the capsule, because they... Doing an extra 60 damage right now. They can just bench on the Iron Crown. <laughs> That's a pretty good prize. All right. I will take that. I'll take it. That's good. All right. Our win con's kind of on board. We knock out the Iron Hands here. Okay, this is fine. As long as I can't amp my Roaring Moon and knock it out. Like my bench Roaring Moon X, I should say. There's two different Roaring Moons. All right, I'll see what my opponent does here. Five cards in hand. They can counter catcher me, which, I mean, I don't, they could just pawn, I mean, hitting this guy with, okay, they're just going to Arvin, okay. No Ionos, which is good. They could arm press me here, but then I just Calamity Storm, knock them out, and like, GG's, I guess. All I have to do is knock out the active and then like KO something on the bench. They might just be amping my active, actually, judging from the play here. It might just be an ampy very much on my active. Ooh, Iron Boulder. Do we ever have to worry about that? I don't think so. That thing does have a lot of HP, actually. But it's... Whatever. It's not like I can get one-shot anyways by the Roaring Moon. So who cares? I mean, I have the Frenzy did, obviously. Actually, speaking of Roaring Moon, I would love to draw another Roaring Moon EX here or another One-Prizer. Are they not amping me? They just put an energy on the bench. Am I trolling? Am I seeing things? No, they didn't. Oh, they're not amping me. Okay. I get well. I guess what they're trying to—they're trying to play around. Like they just want to make sure they can keep attacking with Iron Hands, which I get. But it's working out in our favor. Carrots are top deck. Oh my God! Perfect. I literally just said, "Can I get another Roy Moon?" And look at that. Might as well just grab another Booster Caps. How much energy do we have left in the deck? One energy. All right. We do not want to get a little greedy there. So we're just gonna Sada here to the Double Moon. See, what we got nice. Can nest ball here for another Dunsparce. Just put a bunch of Dunsparces in place. So I have like dead Dunsparce as an out. Attach. Dark patch. And then save the artisan. This is like probably GG's. Because yeah, we claim any storm for the KO. They can't win next turn. We get rid of their stadium, which doesn't really matter, but it could matter. All right, this is probably GG's. My opponent could Iono me to one. But there's nothing they can go into. I think I just win. I just have two moons powered up, right? So it's like basically checkmate. Yeah, it's checkmate. 
They can like knock, they can trap Greninja because I have no energy left. I, they don't know. I, I have one energy in the deck, but they don't, well, I have Vessel. I don't know. They can't, yeah, it's checkmate, it's checkmate, yeah. There's nothing they can do. They go into anything. I just frenzy gouging it because I have two moons powered up. All right, GG's. Look at that. Not bad. That was, this matchup isn't as bad as I thought. All right, going first in this game. Uh, Let's see what we're able to start with here in this match. A mulligan. Ooh, it would have been an okay hand if I had a basic, like a moon or something. All right, let's see what we got. My opponent also mulliganed. Okay, not a bad start. What are we up against? Gardevoir. Ooh, okay. Uh, Probably a fine matchup. We do have Dark Pokemon, obviously really good. We'll have to see how this goes. Dark Pokemon, go burr. Guardy could be tough. We don't play like a vacuum though. We can't like manipulate the prize trade that way, which is the only issue. But going first does help a little bit against Gardevoir. That was like a top deck. Oh, I don't want to play this Artisan. I mean, I kind of have to. It feels bad to literally free routes, but I do need to bench Pokemon. We do have Greninja. We did prize some Dunsparces, which is unfortunate. Not fantastic. Might get Ionoed here. That's fine. We'll just do this and pass. Yeah, like I said, not a fan of putting down the Artisan. I just gave my opponent a free Ralts, but it may not even matter, bro. They got Buddy Poff, and bro, who cares? We'll see if they get the turn one TM Evo. I could dig for Prime Catcher this turn. I mean, I am seeing a lot of cards. I can do Explorer's Guidance plus the Dunsparce. That's what, nine cards we can see? Okay, they're going to Iono me. All right, that's fine. They did hit the TM Evo off of that. That's a little gross. Uh-oh. Okay. That's eh, an okay Iono. Didn't get a Dunsparce. We got more moons, though, which is good. Let's see if they can get double Ralts in play. They've already done concealed cards. They got to draw a Ralts here. Let's see if they got it like that. Hmm. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Not having, like, a vacuum might make this matchup slightly difficult, but we do have the ability to take out the Gardevoir EX with our Dark Pokemon, so... Honestly, maybe if I draw Prime Catcher, I don't even use it. Well, I guess if I take out their only Rolls, I'm going to do it. But we'll see. Yeah, if they only get one Rolls down, I'll take it out. But I would like to maybe save Gus for the Gardevoir EX. Yeah, they got double Rolls. Not good. TM Evo is a pretty good card in Gardevoir. Yeah, it's not great. We'll see what they get rid of here. Flutter main and energy. Yeah, they're going to get the double Curlia. I don't like that. This matchup is still low-key kind of scary, even though we have dark things. Town store. Okay, I'm fine with that. We got the artisan, and we can bump it. I don't hate that. We can get double capsule here, which is good. I think we just attack with the one prize Roin Moon. Save Mooney X for the end of the game. Or is it better to go Mooney X first? It is extremely bulky. Hmm, I wonder. Because they're going to have a hard time knocking it out early on. But they've already got two energy in the discard. Nice. Let's go. That was a huge top deck. Okay, so let's go town store. I kind of would like to also go for a knockout here with uh, Moon. Okay, well, let's do the Trekking Shoes first. Okay, I kind of need that. It's a pretty good card. Hmm, interesting. This is kind of awkward. I have a lot of good cards in my hand. I guess we can get rid of one booster capsule. Yeah, it's fine. I want to do a little bit of thinning here. Do I really want to give him an Artisan, though? Kind of thinking about it. I actually don't know if I even want to do this. No, but I want more Dunsparces. Yeah, I think we got to play the Artisan. I need to just thin. Yeah, maybe... Uh, maybe going Roy Mooney X here wouldn't be terrible. Because it is a really good attacker in the early game. Especially if I get the capsule on it. That's probably going to take a couple prizes before it dies. Okay, well, let me see what we get here before we decide to do anything. Pretty good. Okay, okay. Still no way to get a moon, though. Can't do Sada. Okay, we'll just explore. Holy supporters. It's not good. All right, we are not going Roaring Moon. EX, anyways. Yeah. I mean, I guess I can still go to Dunsparce into it. We only have one Dark Patch, though. No, nah, I think it's just attack with the one prize Roaring Moon for now. Whatever, it's fine. Yeah, we'll just swing with this guy. Um, We do have a kill on the Greninja. So good maybe i will the dunce no i'll still do this i want to try to vessel away a better card okay Ooh, there's prime catcher and roaring moon okay might be a little early to play down the moon because i like, might not be a point now honestly i can probably just vessel the moon away i'm just gonna do that okay cool um 
Might as well attach that there, obviously. And we will take the knockout on their Greninja. All right, not bad. Not bad. Yeah, it would have been nice to maybe go Roy Mooney X there. Could have claimed he stormed away the stadium, but we just weren't able to pull off the combo. We almost got there. We did see a lot of cards. I guess had I went for the... The Dunsparce, I would have been close. We needed another Dark Patch, though. If I could have went Sada, I would have had the Moon, but I had Explorer. We didn't find another Dark Patch, so it wouldn't have mattered. Or I did get... I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. We'll just swing at the one prize Moon. They can't knock me out Guard Roy X's turn either, thanks to the Ancient Booster Capsule. So if my opponent was to play aggressive with Guard EX, that also doesn't kill me. The problem is they have a free Artisan to work with, which is not good. The nice thing about this matchup, though, is Prime Catcher. Pretty good card. We can chase their Guard Roy X. That's the plan, is to just... Try to KO Gardevoir EX when we get the opportunity to. That's the plan. I think we're doing what? 140? I mean, they can still KO me this turn, but they would have to do a lot to KO me. If the Artisan sticks too, we can use that to grab another Moon. Yeah, I think we just want to try to use the one prize Moon this game. I, the Moon EX probably is going to be the, the closer, not the beginner. Okay, they have an Arvin. They are grabbing Screamtail here. They could... Knock on my bench moon, I guess, which would be a little annoying. We'll see. It was good to get rid of Greninja, too, because then they don't have as much draw to work with, which is nice. So their draw was a little crippled. They have to hit a guard of our EX here, I think, right? They have one other card in their hand. So we'll see. See if they can find guard EX. They've already done the uh, Arvin. Yeah, Team Evo. Team Evo's, like, kind of scary, to be honest. Because, like, I don't even... You think about it, it's actually pretty easy for Gardevoir to attack you turn two, thanks to Team Evo. It's actually kind of scary, because usually you have two turns against Gardevoir, because they have the Mirage Depth. But, I mean, that's... Honestly, Team Evo is kind of kind of scary in Gardevoir. The fact they're attacking me turn two is kind of kind of bad, actually. Because usually, before, it'd be like, they they get a rare candy, but a lot of the time, they're Mirage Depth. I mean, okay, we'll see if they even find the Guardi. They've already done Arvin. They only drew four cards. We took out the Greninja, which crippled their draw engine a little bit more. So we might just be safe for one turn here. We'll see. They could evolve that Ralts too or something. I don't know. We'll see. Can they knock me out? Do they have it? They hit Gardevoir X or Ultra Ball. They got it. They got to the Team Evo, which is good. If they wanted to play it solo this turn, they can't do that. Now this Curlia is stuck in the active spot. A free Curlia KO could be good if they don't have anything here. They've already Arvind. I don't think they have it. Unless they have the EX. But the EX can't knock me out. Yikes, they hit the EX. Oh my god, no shop. We only drew four cards. No way. Okay, that's annoying. We can Prime Catcher kill the EX here, though. Okay, if they get the knockout on... Uh, that's annoying. I was actually, I was really hoping they were going to hit it, bro. They only drew four cards off refinement. It's annoying. We'll take out their Gardevoir here, though, obviously, with the Rain Moon. They can snipe my bench. Are they killing my Dunsparce? They might be killing the Dunsparce here, actually. We have two energy in there. Counter catcher. That's fine. We're prime catching them anyways. Not a big deal. Yeah, we're going to prime catcher them regardless. I guess they're going to kill my other moon with Screamtail. We need to make sure we hold on to Super Rod, obviously. Hmm. I guess I don't hate this for us. I mean, I was kind of hoping they just weren't going to take a KO this turn, like I said, but it's fine. What do we top deck? Ooh, boss's order. That's pretty good. Hmm. Might as well just play the boss, just kind of keep the prime catcher for later. Kind of down. Because we can just dark patch. We don't really even have the Sada. Uh, three, six, seven... I'm trying to think. Do I want to conceal? Yeah, I think I do. I want to get another moon down if I can. Nice. Dark patch is good. 300. Oh, we don't have a knockout on the active. Didn't even realize. The active actually does... Or the, the guardian on the bench doesn't die. What? Okay. Uh, Honestly, you know what? I could kill their Curlia. They don't have a draw engine if I take out Curlia. And they have an Iono probably in hand, but... Damn, I'd have to Sada Prime Catcher. I didn't even realize that. I thought I just had a KO. I didn't. It's a bit of a yikes. I could Dunsparce to try to get the knockout. I want to save this guy, though, for the Iono. I could hit the Gardevoir, but they could Turo it. Okay, we'll just kill their Curly. That's fine. 
I mean, K on the Screamtail might have been an okay play too, but now the energy is stuck in play. If I had a Manaphy here, that'd be nice. Okay, what's our prize? Nice. Second Sod is pretty good. Yeah, I'm down to just KO the... KO the Curlia, because, like, assuming they have nothing in their hand, like, there's no supporter, they can't they can't draw any cards. So it's fine. Yeah, I I maybe... I should have just went for the Sada Prime Catcher on the Gardevoir EX. It's fine. It's not a big deal. I don't mind killing the Curlia, though, because if they don't set anything up next turn, we can KO the thing. Okay, they have an Arvin. See? No Iona. So now we should be able to take this knockout next turn, unless they pull off something crazy. It's actually kind of awkward for them because my opponent can't grab a... There's no level ball anymore. They can't just Arvin for level ball for Curlia. So they might not be able to draw any cards here. It's actually not bad. What are they going to Arvin for? They grab probably like Bravery Charm slash Cape or something. And then the other card, I don't know. They could get an Ultra Ball. They can discard the Bravery Charm with Refinement. That might have to be their play. Unless they have like Rare Candy Gallade in hand maybe. That'd be pretty bad. No, they just grab Nest Ball. See, yeah, without Level Ball anymore, it's hard for them to get Curlia's out. So they have to rely heavily on Team Evo. So, I don't know. Kale and the Curlia there feels okay too, to be honest. They're probably going to Scream Tail my Dunsparce, but that's fine. I mean, they're not not gonna have my moons. That's honestly not that big of a deal. I actually wouldn't. I wouldn't really hate if they killed the Dunsparce because we're just gonna go saw to Prime Catcher anyways. I don't really mind if they kill Dunsparce here. We can get a third Roaring Moon in play. Seems good to me. There's a matchup where I wish I had like at least one vacuum though. Okay, yeah, they're going Ultra Ball. They they have the Ultra Ball, so they have to do this to grab a Curlia. Do they have another Curlia? They do. They have to get rid of their Bravery Charm, which could be relevant. It's one less tool they have. Could kill their Curlia next turn, but I definitely just kill the Gardevoir EX. There's no reason to not kill Gardevoir here. This refinement would literally have to give them a Collapse Stadium, and then it would get a little tricky. If they get a Collapse, though, and they collapse the Gardevoir EX, I'll just Prime Catcher the Curlia, though. So that probably is fine, actually. That's probably fine. I mean, I don't want them to get Gallade in play, because I don't want them to have access to Buddy Catch, but we definitely just kill the Guardian next turn. 100% is the play. That's our last two gusts, though. We have we can't use Counter Catcher for the rest of the game, but we should easily be able to take two knockouts back to back. So, as long as we just keep attacking, should be okay. They can't Iono me this turn. They've already done refinement. Do they have a Clap Stadium? And if they Clap Stadium, I'll just Prime Catcher the Curlia and knock it out. Okay. What are they KOing? It's got to be the Moon, right? Yeah, I was gonna say if they. I mean, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I don't really want to lose all my Moons. I only have one left now, but two Moons should be fine. Well, I guess the Prime Catcher play... Yeah, no, we just Prime Catcher into the other other Moon. I want to get a Moon EX in play here, too. So we can go Prime Catcher to Dunsparce. Yeah, I want a Prime Catcher first. Okay. And we'll do the Runner Rage Raw, because I want to try to find more stuff. Nice! Let's go! Roaring Moon EX! That's what I was looking for. We'll capsule that. Play the Sada. Perfect. Another Dunsparce would be good. Hey, let's go, baby. Ask you shall receive. We get double Dunsparce, which is nice. And thanks to the Sada, 340. Well, they, they were dead anyways, but the Sada's nice. All right, we'll take this knockout. And then, yeah, that's looking pretty good. All I have to do is attack two more times. All right, well, what's our two prizes? Okay, cool. More energy is always good. We only have, what, three, seven, two left. Okay. So they can still scream tail, obviously. I maybe should have put the capsule on this guy, to be honest, but like it's fine. Because we have enough we have a Mooney X. We just need two knockouts to win the game. And I don't think they have enough Pokemon to survive. The best thing they can do here is Iono me, obviously. Double Dunsparce keeps me a little safe. As long as I just keep attacking, it's not a big deal. But they could Iono me this turn. They are only left at one Curlia, so if they don't get like Gallade here, they don't have an Iono, it should be pretty good. I mean, they probably do have an Iono. They haven't played one yet. They played one Iono. Could prize an Iono. They're down two Ultras. We'll see if they can get Gallade here. Yeah, they have the Iono. They can't kill my active, though, with Screamtail. They have to hit a Gardevoir EX off the Iono. <laughs> they, yeah, I don't mean a Dunsparce energy anyway. is insane. How many Dark Patches do I have left? Still one. It's not bad. Screamtail kind of sucks here against my active. They have to have a Vacuum here. Or else this, the active... I mean, the active Roy Moon not getting KO'd is really good. Because they're just going to Screamtail my other Bench Moon. And it's like, okay... I'll just attach my other moon, dun dun sparse, and it's like GG's checkmate almost. Yeah, the Screamtail is just not it, they would have rather obviously be going balloon burst, because it can they can try to do the 200 damage. 
Screamtails is not cutting it right now. Super odd top deck. Shoes. Okay, we'll play the shoes. See if we can find anything good here. Ultra ball. All right. I can shuffle the deck to try to get Sodder Explorer. Okay, we'll play this. And then we'll just do this to shuffle. So I'm trying to get the Explorer, Sodder them into the bottom of the deck. Yeah. Hey, and we got Super Rod. That's kind of crazy. I'm not going to lie. I probably just need the one moon at this point. Because I can Ultra Ball for the energy. Go Ultra Ball for energy. I'm getting sealed first. I don't want to run out of energy, so I got to be a little cautious. Okay, I need that. This is fine. Whatever. We'll just saw it out of the Roy Moon. It probably doesn't really matter. I don't really need to get two moons in play. We just kind of wanted to just, just to have two in play just in case, but it doesn't really matter. Nice. This is basically checkmate, right? Yeah, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> yeah, this is basically GG's regardless. We just knock out the active. We have two moons in play. They can't really do anything about that. Both moons actually have a lot of HP in this scenario. My opponent's forced to do an HP modifier. We have a Dunsparce in place, so if they go Iono Screamtail, they die. Okay, I think we win. I'm, I'm overthinking this probably, but this is basically GG's. Like, I don't... Yeah. I think this is game. No Iono. That's, like, pretty good. Yeah, I don't think they have anything they can do. There's nothing they can go into that can survive a hit from either moon, so it's, like, GG's, I guess. Everything's weak to dark in their deck. Not to mention, this thing's already doing a gajillion damage at this point. We got, what, three... Five, six, ten, twelve, twelve in my discard pile, plus the... Yeah, there's like a, nothing... They have nothing that can take a hit, I don't think. There's the Screamtail. Rare Candy Gardevoir. It's fine. They're not Ionu me this turn, so... It's like, yeah. There's nothing they can do. It's GG's. There's nothing they can bring in that can survive a hit from either moon, I don't think. They have to have a Pokemon in their deck that doesn't get KO'd by Vengeful... Fletching that has a lot of HP. And then they also have to kill the moon on the bench with the capsule. The capsule is also really bad for them because they need the HP boosters in order to kill the things on the bench where they just do not have. Yeah, there's the Guardi. Yeah, this matchup's pretty good. I mean, hey, Gardevoir, it's still a good deck. I mean, it's still doing good in online tourneys. I think Gardevoir still has some potential in this format. And if Gardevoir is still going to be a playable deck, this deck does seem pretty good against Gardevoir. Especially when you have, like, the Dunsparces, so you can kind of play around Iona. That was one of Moon's worst things about playing against Gardevoir than past format, was they just kept Iona in you over and over and over again. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, but now that we have the uh, now that we have the, the answer to Iona, it's fine. With the Dunsparce, it doesn't feel as bad. This thing's weak to dark, right? Okay, good. Yeah, nothing they can do. The Screamtail can kill my, gar uh, my Moon, but it's all good. Countercatch Greninja, it's fine. We have Energy... In hand. This is why I didn't get greedy and get rid of too many energies. Because I'm like, yeah, they're probably going to try to stall me. But Roaring Scream. That does kill my Roaring Moon on the bench. But it's not going to be enough to KO the Roaring Moon EX. That's GG's. I mean, it did get kind of close because my opponent just needed to KO the EX to win. But like I said, if we can just, like, attack with the one prize Roaring Moon the entire game, we do just win. Um, but this works too. We can just knock him out here. Yeah, Ancient Booster Capsule is good in this matchup too. Because it makes it more awkward for them. Obviously, just being able to kill their Gardevoir in one hit is good. I think this matchup kind of comes down to whether or not you can save your Gusting cards. Um, because, yeah, just being able to kill the Gardevoir EX is, is pretty good. As long as they don't, like, Turo or Collapse it, it's, like, really, really good. Um, the only thing that I don't like about this matchup now is they can attack you really quickly thanks to the TM Evo. So that's, like, the only scary thing about this matchup. But other than that, matchup's decent. And there you have it, folks. That is the Roaring Moon deck in action. I really did enjoy playing this deck. I really liked the Dunspar specifically. It was nice to have a safety net to Iono spam. Because that's one thing that, like, the ancient decks really do suffer against is getting Ionoed constantly or judged or whatever. So it is really nice to have some kind of draw answer. And this card is really nice because it's never really a liability because of its ability Always lets it get out of the active spot, assuming that you don't get, like, Flood or Main counter -catcher. But I did like the Mooney X. Mooney X is still a very strong card right now. Whether or not you're playing it with the other Run Prize Run Moon or by itself, Roy Mooney X goes hard in our current format. Especially when there's so much control out right now. Moon it just specifically is really strong against control decks. And I like the list. I think one thing I'd maybe change about it is to add another energy to the deck. Maybe another Gust card, like a second boss or something, or a Palpad. Would be really the only changes I would make to 
the Celestester playing it, but the deck felt pretty clean. And that'll be it for me on today's video on the double Roaring Moon deck. Let me know what you think of the Roaring Moon deck down below in the comments. Moon ain't dead yet, baby. And that'll be it for me on today's video. If y'all enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe down below. Help me on the road to reaching 58,000 subs. Check out Card Cavern down below. If you get any codes, use code LDF. Check out my Twitch, my Twitter, my Discord, and the second channel down below. I just did a video where we looked at a brand new Milotic card, which could be both good and bad for Snorlax Stall. So if you want to go check that video out, link it down below to my second channel. That'll be for me. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll catch you on another Temporal Forces deck video. Bye-bye.